Good afternoon, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and I've got a detailed weather update on the situation for northeast New South Wales and southeast Queensland going into tomorrow where a significant severe thunderstorm outbreak is possible. We're talking about some very unstable conditions pushing into especially New South Wales with risk of giant hailstones, supercell thunderstorms and destructive winds being our main concerns at this point in time. If you are brand new to my channel, please do consider subscribing and leave a like on the video while you're at it as well. We're going to be doing some live coverage, so by subscribing you'll get the first notification into when we do go live on these thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon. But you can see this afternoon, we do have a few thunderstorms in a pretty isolated nature, all things considered. The stronger ones are into the northeast of New South Wales. It's nothing crazy going on. We've also got a few into central Queensland, as expected, very isolated and sporadic in nature, but they're really beginning to get themselves going now. And we may see one or two severe thunderstorms with pockets of heavy rainfall and maybe a damaging wind gust or two towards the south of Roma, right down through Lightning Ridge, Walgett, and then up towards the Coonable area and towards the north central parts of New South Wales. Even Cobar, Burke and Wanaring may see a drop or two of rain associated from these thunderstorms moving through. But it's not today that we're interested in. It is tomorrow, Saturday, the big day for severe thunderstorm activity, pushing things through. You can see these thunderstorms moving towards the east throughout the course of today. We're not expecting anything serious, but it's going to be tomorrow morning into early tomorrow afternoon when thunderstorms are going to begin to kick off into the northeast of New South Wales. Big time convective activity is expected to occur, particularly onto the northern side of the mid-north coast and then up into the Coffs Harbour area. This is the zone to be watching at least initially. Big supercell thunderstorms likely to form through here. And then as the day goes on, we're going to be watching for a slightly weaker, but still pretty strong thunderstorms expected in this area here, right up down or right down towards Tamworth and Armadale, but including Moree, Narrabri, Inveril, and Gundawindi over in towards Queensland. We've also got some strong thunderstorms that could form in a non severe fashion here, right up towards Charleville as they move further towards the east out to St. George and then Fallon eventually later into the afternoon. But it's going to be a big day. There's a lot of thunderstorm activity that's going to get itself going. So just starting things off with the northeast of New South Wales, these thunderstorms developing, as mentioned, at about two or three o'clock in the afternoon. Afternoon, they're going to be at their strongest around 5 o'clock New South Wales time, 4 o'clock Queensland time. And by around 4 o'clock Queensland time, we'll be seeing some strong thunderstorm activity close to the border as well. So Wollongarra, Stanthorpe, but especially Clifton, Warwick, and up towards Toowoomba. And then into parts of the scenic rim around the Boona area, some strong thunderstorm activity is possible through here. Not to mention at around 4 or 5 o'clock, some squally thunderstorms upscaling from those uh, initially pulse thunderstorms we're going to see earlier on in the afternoon. We'll be beginning to get themselves going around the Tambo and Orcathella area, pushing eastward to Injun and Roma. And then out to about five or six o'clock, multicellular score lines can be expected out here. The damaging wind threat increases, but for heavy rainfall and large hailstones, the threat's slowly begin, beginning to diminish, diminish out there. There's going to be this little ugly spot in towards central Queensland here, south of Roma and Chinchilla, down to about Fallon, Gundawindi, and then Toowoomba. This little corridor through here where Dolby and Miles are, we're not expecting much thunderstorm activity through here, but we still could be seeing one or two strong thunderstorms develop. And then further south of a line between Narrabri and Armadale, down to Taree, thunderstorm activity is also not really expected through here. So we've kind of got these little zones and clusters of thunderstorms that are expected to develop through tomorrow because of these very favourable conditions and where they are dispersed. Into the northeast of New South Wales, again, between three o'clock to six o'clock is the big time for thunderstorms. Uh, through parts of the mid north coast and then into the northeast slopes. Some big powerful thunderstorms are expected around the Grafton and Coffs Harbour area as we normally do see in outbreaks like this. But we'll also be seeing some very strong isolated, and I mean very isolated, just one or two thunderstorms into the southern parts of the mid north coast and even into the Hunter region around Newcastle, down to Gosford and even through parts of the Sydney metro area, uh, particularly towards the northwest and the western suburbs of Sydney and then down to Wollongong along the Illawarra coastline. We'll be seeing some very isolated and sporadic but still quite strong thunderstorm activity in this area. We're talking about one or two cells in a certain area. Really not much activity is expected down here, but whatever thunderstorms do develop, they'll be small and isolated in nature, but they could get very strong, possibly supercellular. So we'll be talking about that large hail risk, potentially giant hail risk in a few of these thunderstorms, damaging to locally destructive wind gusts and some pockets of heavy rainfall, but these thunderstorms likely will be moving along at a rate of knots. And I can show that by the convective soundings here. You can see those 500 to 700 millibar winds, uh, very, very fast moving thunderstorms is expected. These storms will be moving along at between 60 to 80 kilometers an hour. And this is for this general area here around the Wollongong, the Sydney and the Newcastle area. These thunderstorms do slow down a little bit as we get further north. You can see those 500 HPA winds drop down to about 30 knots, so about 50 kilometers an hour up around the Grafton and the Coffs Harbour area, and still a very, very favorable environment. So fast moving storms are not expected into the northeast of New South Wales, likewise over into Queensland, but down in towards central New South Wales, so Sydney, Gosford, uh, Newcastle, uh, and through the Hunter region, some very quickly moving thunderstorms can be expected down there 
there. And again, the message for that part of New South Wales is isolated thunderstorms in nature, but they will be strong. And if they do make a beeline for your location, you could be talking about large or potentially giant hailstones. But yeah, like I said, the northeast of New South Wales and pockets of extreme southeastern Queensland is what we're expecting for the strong thunderstorm activity. Not so much into the Gold Coast or the Brisbane City area. We're talking around the Warwick and the Stanthorpe sort of area in this general vicinity here is kind of where the strongest thunderstorms are going to be, kind of in those valleys between the mountains. We don't normally see strong thunderstorm activity through some of the bigger mountain ranges in this part of New South Wales or Queensland, but definitely into some of the valleys or some over, over the lower hills around the Warwick and the Toowoomba area. Some strong thunderstorm activity is most certainly expected. And then on that coastal plain up towards Lismore around the Grafton and Coffs Harbour area, some strong thunderstorm activity is, of course, naturally expected as well down there. Now, later on into the night around 6 or 7 o'clock uh, Queensland time, we're going to be seeing some of these thunderstorms then begin to push towards the west of Brisbane. So this means that the upscaled versions of those potentially supercellular thunderstorms that originated around the Warwick area are then going to push up into the Lockyer Valley uh, towards the west of Ipswich and Marburg, and these thunderstorms will then push into the Wyvernhoe Outlook and potentially up towards Caboolture, but they should miss the Brisbane and the Gold Coast City areas towards the west, and by a pretty significant margin as well. We're not talking about significant severe thunderstorm activity into the Brisbane area, and we're probably not even going to be talking about thunderstorm activity full stop into the Gold Coast area. In fact, anywhere within this red circle or on the coastal side of this red circle, which includes pretty much everywhere out towards Ipswich, has a very low chance of seeing thunderstorm activity tomorrow afternoon, probably below 20 or 30 percent. Ipswich is where the chances do begin to increase, but we're likely to see thunderstorms around the Gatton and the Marburg area, and we're definitely expecting some strong thunderstorm activity towards the south through parts of the scenic rim around the Boona area, and then, like I said, around the Warwick and the Clifton area, where we had those very powerful supercell thunderstorms last weekend. These thunderstorms will, as they always do, upscale into multicellular squall lines, and we will be seeing some isolated squally activity then pushing towards the Caboolture area, and then later on into the evening, potentially up and towards the southern parts of the Sunshine Coast, but it's doubtful whether they're going to remain thunderstorms, and they most certainly won't be severe by the time they get themselves up to the Sunshine Coast. This is then when the rainfall begins to kick in. We're expecting a steady stream of rainfall to then develop through this area here and for locations further towards the north, so this will include parts of the Fraser and the Capricornia coastline, and then this becomes a Sunday morning type uh, rain problem here. We're going to be talking about some steady, not really heavy rainfall at all. It's just going to be that steady stuff that's going to move in towards central parts of Queensland or adjacent to the central Queensland coastline, and then Sunday may bring some strong thunderstorm activity through parts of the Capricornia coastline as well. In fact, conditions are already beginning to look quite favourable for potentially some strong, if not severe, thunderstorm activity through parts of the Capricornia coastline. Nothing crazy, nothing absolutely insane or record-breaking in this part of Queensland, but we still may be seeing some relatively strong thunderstorm activity, and it is something that is worth keeping a, a, an eye on at this point in time. Now, how do these thunderstorms for Queensland at least stack up compared to last weekend's? Well, they're going to be comparatively a lot weaker by the looks of things. We're not expecting anything crazy or massive to occur like the hailstones we saw around the Clifton or the Pratton area last weekend. Giant hailstones are still going to be a weak possibility through parts of the scenic rim and around the Toowoomba and Warwick area, just as giant hailstones will also be a possibility around Gundawindi, Thallon, and then up to about St. George in this sort of area as well. So that's up to five centimetres in diameter. Those hailstones can cause some significant damage to cars, but they're not normally the ones that cause absolute devastation. We're not expecting anything bigger than about five or six centimetres to occur in terms of the hail side, uh, side of things. But over and towards New South Wales, it is a pretty similar setup for one or two locations. We're definitely going to be seeing some very strong activity through parts of the mid-north coast in an isolated fashion, albeit, but some strong thunderstorms definitely expected north of Newcastle, up through Taree, Kempsey, Coffs Harbour, Grafton, Yamba, and then north towards Lismore, and then even further inland as well around the Moree and the Narrabri area, there's going to be some isolated, significant, severe thunderstorm activity out here as well. And we could be talking about some severe thunderstorms that produce hailstones up to seven or even eight centimetres in diameter. Of course, those sort of thunderstorms will be very isolated in nature and will only impact the smallest fraction of the areas that are circled in these warning areas. But it's still a risk and they could develop at any point tomorrow night into parts of New South Wales. And the message of tomorrow is to act now to prepare and make sure you are ready for severe thunderstorm activity. This is a pretty stock standard outbreak for this time of the year. It's nothing to be overly concerned about, but it is important to remain vigilant and remain on top of the situation to make sure that you don't suffer any losses or damages as a result of these severe thunderstorms. Hail will be a risk tomorrow, particularly in towards New South Wales, so I would avoid all non-essential travel after about two o'clock in severe thunderstorm warned areas, and we're likely to see some pretty significant significant thunderstorm activity like we're beginning to see right now. And you can see with these reflectivity readings around the high 60s in a few spots here with this thunderstorm moving outside of Corinda, that's likely got a hail core in it. And this will be pretty stock standard tomorrow. This is going to be one of the uh, weaker side of things on the storm front uh, tomorrow. So very strong thunderstorms look to be uh, on the or the go for New South Wales tomorrow. They could cause damage to cars. They could cause damage to property as well. So make sure the car is undercover. If you can't put it undercover, get a tarp over it after about two o'clock. And like I said, avoid that non-essential travel, uh, particularly 
through tomorrow afternoon and into early tomorrow evening. For Queensland, this is pretty stock standard. The majority of these thunderstorms are going to be non-severe, particularly uh, around the Brisbane and the Ipswich area, but one or two strong thunderstorms is still most certainly a possibility. And it is important that you remain vigilant and on top of the situation as well. I'm going to be running live coverage as uh, my viewership is. It will be Queensland focused. Unfortunately, I would love to cover the storms over in New South Wales, but we will definitely be looking at those storms in great detail as well for New South Wales. So if that is your cup of tea and you want to remain on top of the situation, then make sure you are subscribed to my channel as well and check out the Facebook page for further updates. And I'll be tracking these storms live as they unfold through Queensland and New South Wales. Tomorrow is not an overly concerning threat. Remember that this is just a heads up and this is a courtesy message basically to expect those severe thunderstorms tomorrow as we expect them very frequently at this time of the year across New South Wales and Queensland. This is not a massive concern or not something to be panicking over or cancelling plans over, but there will be some severe thunderstorms around and as mentioned through New South Wales, they will get quite strong tomorrow. So make sure you are severe thunderstorm ready and as mentioned, avoid that non-essential travel. Of course, any further questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below and also check out my Facebook page for further information. It looks like tomorrow is going to be a pretty hairy day through parts of New South Wales and even in towards Queensland as well, there are some good thunderstorms on the forecast. I'm very excited to see what the convective forecast modelling has for southeastern Queensland. It hasn't came out just yet, but you can see the access convective is already going pretty ham with some pretty significant thunderstorm activity, in particular of the pulse thunderstorm sort at around one or two o'clock tomorrow afternoon through parts of Queensland, and that will also carry over into the border here in New South Wales. There's some pretty significant clusters of pulse thunderstorms beginning to get themselves going by around one o'clock tomorrow. So it's going to be a long outbreak once again, thunderstorms starting far out into the west, and they've got a long, long track to make uh, right out towards Queensland. So normally when these dry lines are so far inland, as we saw last weekend, which is why Brisbane and the Gold Coast saw very little in the way of significant severe thunderstorm activity, particularly on Saturday with all of those nasty predictions, uh, they really did dodge the bullet, the Brisbane area. With this dry line, that's going to start off very far inland. And the fact that we're also going to have a bit of high cloud coverage as well in, uh, towards the north of this red line, so in this sort of area here, uh, that's going to result in these thunderstorms forming a lot further out towards the west and then pushing further and further out towards the east and upscaling as they go, which is why they're going to be substantially weaker but, or even non-existent by the time they get themselves into the Brisbane or the Gold Coast area. It'll be an interesting one tomorrow. It's going to be a long day again, so subscribe if you haven't already. Check out the Facebook page. But that is going to be all for me this afternoon or this evening out at this point in time. Uh, for further updates, as mentioned, look at the Facebook page and also let me know in the comments section down below if I can improve in any way that would help you. If you've got any questions or comments as well, leave them in the comments section down below. But that is going to be all for me. A special shout out, of course, to the channel sponsors. How could I forget? Uh, a lot of the names on the screen right now are brand new and I'm hoping to get some more people as well. So if you haven't already, click the join button down below. It's the best way to financially support the Cyclones Oz channel. So I do thank everybody that is on this list. Their support is absolutely amazing and incredible to me. So thank you so much for that. But that will be all for me this afternoon. I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.